we've had some questions about the belts that we use around here, just the, the gunfighter belt, the uh, range belt, whatever you want to call it. So we thought we'd do a video for you on this thing and just tell you the uh, rationale behind why it's set up the way it is, go over the pieces and parts and the different brand items that are in it. Some of these things we carry on our website, others we'll tell you where you can get it and have some links in the description below. So we'll start off, go ahead and clear the, clear the weapons out source of the ammo is removed and then you lock slide to the rear show clear okay guns out of the way lock that thing to the rear and set it aside so the belt itself the foundation of the belt is a ferro concepts bison belt ferro concepts is the company that makes this belt bison belt bison belt the this is the outer belt and this is the inner belt. We'll go over both. But the the belt, this outer belt comes with a different couple different configurations with regard to the type of buckle that you choose. We go with the Cobra buckle because it's a positive lock, it's easy to get off, and easy to put back together, and it's not coming apart. So we'll now we'll start, go to the inside, and we'll flip it over, and we'll start from this side and work our way across. So the belt, the inner part of the belt is hook. That's the grippy part of the Velcro, the hook part of the Velcro. Uh, that's the grip side of the outer belt. And then the inner belt here is made out of the loop or the pile. And this is the thing that runs through your belt loops and it attaches there. You know, to hook the belt to that. And that keeps the belt from uh, moving around if you're squatting, running, jumping, getting in and out of a vehicle or whatever. This particular inner belt, the me closing mechanism on it, is a G-hook, right? And it's because it looks like the letter G, I guess. But that's just a very simple uh, hook it through that, and there you go. It's adjustable on the sides. You can take this and pull it to whatever size. It's kind of one size fits off of this piece. And I'll explain what uh, these dark lines are here as we go forward in the video. So that is, oh, here's, uh, if you're really super skinny, this one, you can come all the way over and you can hook it in right there. But if you've got a waist like that, that's probably about the size of my thigh. You don't want that. Well, yeah, you do maybe if you're a girl, who knows, whatever. So that's the inner belt. We'll look at that in a second. All right, let's flip this thing over and talk about it. Get the pistols out of the way. All right, so moving from here to there. We'll start off with a Cobra Buckle. It's adjustable in terms of you, know, you pull it. And then what I've done is taken some one wrap and have secured the tail end. Once I got it adjusted to my waist size, just put the tail end through there and put the one wrap over it. And that keeps that from going anywhere on me. Next in line is just a little one wrap hook, and I ran it through the uh, the Molly because this thing, this little hook, has got Velcro on it as well. But that little thing right there is for keeping up with keys or uh, Ear Pro um, when you go into the range. Next in line is the holster, and this is the Safari Land. A holster and set up for a Glock 19 with uh, optics and you can see the extra shroud piece here this is to allow the the, uh, the uh, RMR to clear the holster and get in there uh, real good so that's the holster there and it's attached to this you can see the uh, mechanisms here that are connecting this thing the holster is connected here and this is connected here. And I'll take it apart and show you what we've got going on. So it's it's the QLS. Give me one second to pull that off. It's the Safari Land QLS uh, uh, lock uh, release system. It stands for Quick Lock System, I believe. Um, this particular holster is the 6354DO, as in Delta Oscar, 6832. That's the Glock 3435. Uh, set up for a Surefire X300, and what we've done is 
Uh, I carry my Glock 19 in this. It works just fine. The um, QLS is this little plate here, and it's got ears on it that are air, you know, kind of springy there. And what that does is that slides down into this QLS receiver plate. The QLS receiver plate allows you then to take, if I wanted to carry a different pistol and a different holster, all I have to do is make sure I've got that on it and slide it in, and it'll be in the same place uh, on that that every one of my holsters, my guns would be. So that's the holster. It's in multicam. It's got a wrap around it and found it in Afghanistan in rocky environments or going through doors and whatnot. This thing, this material uh, helps dampen the uh, noise. It also doesn't reflect IR. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the belt itself by uh, Feral Concepts is not IR reflective under nods, which is a good thing. You don't want to be glowing in the dark when the bad guy's looking at you through NVGs or binos. So, uh, well, another thing about the holster here is I've met, had a modification to it, and that's this little job right here. Right? If you can see, that is not the standard, um, this is not the, the standard that comes with the holster. This is by OT Defense. It's called the Nub Mod. And you can see where it uh, just screws together. It's a piece that clamps around, clamps around it and piece goes through, screws it together, and that just gives me a little bit more purchase when I'm coming down on the uh, ALS release to get that weapon out. So that's the nub mod on the holster. Now, continuing on down the road, here we've got the QLS attached to a True North Concepts modular holster adapter. These things are awesome. Um, they bolt in to the belt, so there's no slide back and forth like the old uh, Safari Land drop leg or mid-length drop. All it was was a basically a two slots and a piece of plastic and the belt could slide all over the place. This thing goes nowhere. You have two um, pieces of metal here. These two plates are just bars. And what I've done is I've taken those bars and run them through the molly here. And then it's rubber spacers and then I've bolted it down on both sides. It's going nowhere. This thing is locked in place, never going anywhere. You can see on the back all of the different options you have here for adjusting the angle of the holster, adjusting the height of the holster, um, the cant, you know, the, all of this is just super, you can tweak it to whatever your uh, body shape type desire needs are. And then it comes with a, separately you can order it, it's a um, leg strap kit. The uh, leg strap kit is also from True North Concepts and it bolts onto the bottom of this and drops down and then this, this goes through another little piece of metal plate down here. I don't want anything that long on my leg, so all I did was run it behind the QLS and between the holster adapter. It can slide, but that screwed down so tight it's not going anywhere, and it can't come out because it's got pieces on the end that prevent it from sliding out. So that keeps the thing down to your leg, which is helpful, because when you go to draw, this thing will move just by the very fact that it's something hanging from a belt. This keeps it tight to your body, tight to your thigh. You can pull it, it won't go anywhere. It's not flapping in the breeze. So that's the holster adapter, the QLS, the holster itself. Moving along, next is the Leatherman. This is the Leatherman EOD MUT. I don't know what MUT stands for. I guess it's multi-use tool, but this is uh, just a handy device to have. Everybody needs to have one of these, I think, if you're going to the range. Just never know what needs to be fixed, but it's got just a nice sharp blade serrated at the base on one side. On the other side, you've got a saw coming out. Uh, it's got screws, you know, little bits for screws, and then it's opened it up, and you got a pair of pliers in there. You know what a multi-tool is. There's a hammer end on this. There's a, particularly for uh, weapons, there's a bronze scraper for cleaning out junk out of the... Uh, weapon and it claps together. It's got a belt clip on it here if you wanted to carry it in your pocket but it's kind of bulky and I've got enough bulk in my pants where I don't need to add that to it. Okay moving along. Now uh, one thing though just seriously thinking about how you carry your stuff and I am a nitpick about everything that I use and how and where it's placed and it even goes to something like this. When I put this in this, when I reach back to pull this out, I want it to come out the same way every time, and I want it oriented 
so that I can get to the thing I use the most. The thing I use the most on this is simply the pocket knife, right? And so when I put this in here, I put it the same way every time. That way, when I go to pull it out, if it's dark, I know it's coming out and the blade's coming out and I can do whatever I need to do. So the orientation is the same every time. This is, uh, it's got a strap molly down through the backside of the belt. Uh, so it's not going anywhere. Next, this is the London Bridge Trading Company uh, IFAC. And the IFAC is kind of key as to where you place this thing, in my opinion. Because, uh, again, I told you I'm a nitpick. This thing has to be centered in my spine. If I'm riding a vehicle, this thing is in my back all day long. That I'm in that car, truck, whatever, uh, helicopter. So this needs to be centered in my spine. So when you put the belt on, have a buddy line this thing up, put it basically in the center of your spine, and then tape it in place so that you can then take it and wrap it down to where you want it to go. The, the design of this, it's got slots so you can slide a belt through it. But once you get the belt slid through it, it can still go somewhere unless you take, because you can also mount this thing to a uh, molly. You can mount, uh, put it on plate care if you want to. But what I've done is I slid it through here, got it in place where I want it. I know that's in the exact center of my spine. And then I took these um, uh, molly straps and took them and weaved them through the belt, came back and tucked it in place. So now this is not going to go anywhere either. So that's the, that's the, the way it's attached. Take this out for now. The function of this is this, right? You've got a pull tab here. And this pull tab, get a little piece of hook Velcro that it connects here and that allows you to stow that out of the way. And it just dangles down there. And so when you're ready to use it, if you need to use it, you just reach back, grab that, pull. When you pull, what happens is these, this is connected to these wires that go each direction. Those wires weave through these um, little, I guess, nylon teeth. So when you pull that and it comes loose, that frees up and opens the mouth of this thing. And this red cord I've got is attached to a, a plate. Uh, a, it's, it's a Tegris panel that closes. And all of my med, it, metal, medical kit is bungeed down to that uh, placard. So when I pull it all out, all my meds aren't going to just fly all off into the ground. They're all going to be attached, and I can hang on to this, and I can get and use it, and you know, that's how that works. We'll do a more in-depth dive on the IFAC and what we carry in our med kits and stuff uh, in a future video. But for now, this is just kind of giving you an overview. So that's there. Now, you'll notice I had a tourniquet, right? This is a RATS tourniquet, rapid application, rapid application tourniquet. And the tourniquet is very, very simple compared to some of the others that are on the market. This thing is compact. You can take it and... What I do is I just jam it down inside this uh, piece of nylon stretch material here, tuck away the tab, and now I've got a tourniquet at my back that is very easy to use. You know, you take this thing, pull it out, snatch it loose, and you've got a three-finger loop here. The three-finger loop there, and now you you basically just you you stick the limb in there where you need the wrap. And you wrap, you wrap, and you wrap, and you wrap, and you wrap until you get to where you're ready to cleat that thing off. And now, you know, you've got this thing pulled as tight as can. It's made out of stretchy material. It's a super fast way to get a tourniquet on somebody and, or yourself. And then you just write the time when you put it on here. And it's uh, small. If you want to carry this as everyday carry, you can take this thing and run this line through your belt loops of your belt and tuck this away in a pocket or just tuck it up underneath the belt and now you've got a tourniquet on your person that um, blends in with your belt under your shirt. So that's what goes here. All right, so we'll get that out of the way. Now, moving along, we get to the mag pouches here. And this mag pouch, sorry, over here, don't get distracted. This mag pouch is made by Estac Kiwi different brand, different company, and the uh, the mag pouches are got 
kydex inserts down inside here. So that's your retention, right? This is going nowhere. I mean, that, that is not coming out unless I physically pull it out. So that's the, the retention here, this um, inserts of kydex here. This is an M4 plus two uh, double stack pistol mags go in there. And the outer is covered in you know, just the same nylons, everything else. It's a two plus one gap is the type. And gaps is, you know, the reason it says gap is because there's a gap between these. If they're so tight together, they're like this, everything's clamped together, it can impede your ability to get down on these and pull them out at rap, you know, speedily if you needed to. So I, I opted for the gap in mine. How is it attached? It's attached using malice clips. These are just plastic clips that you order that come with it. And they weave into the belt through. The belt has got, let's see if I can get an example of this for you. The bison belt has got nylon molly strips, right? You can see there. And then there's one at the bottom. And that's how you weave things in. Just weave your molly through there. And then it's got a tegris material for it as a stiffener inside the belt. So you run the malice through those molly strips, clamp, um, snap them together at the bottom. It's not going anywhere. However, I'm a stickler for my gear. I don't want it going anywhere. So I zip tied mine down, right? I don't want it. I don't want it moving. I don't want it to go anywhere. So that is uh, the two plus one gap S Tech. This is um, just a baseline belt that. You know, you can scale this thing up, you can scale it down, uh, but this gives you essentially just what you need for, you know, you got a holster working around, you got something to fix things with, you got something to fix you with, you got something to keep your rifle back uh, going again and get your pistol up back up in action again. Now, the last thing that we didn't cover is this little dangler here, and this is a tourniquet, right? All it is is a tourniquet in a sleeve and the sleeve is hanging below on this. So it's just attached with a piece of Velcro, right? And it's just a little sleeve, and it's a soft T, S-O-F-T tourniquet, right? Just bundles up real nice. And that's the uh, tourniquet model there. And so that just hangs in its little place right there in front. Right there in front. So that's how that works. That's the belt I use. A couple of just general points. You'll notice that the, the front of my belt is essentially slick with the exception of this, which I can take this off if I don't have to, if I don't want to use that. But I like to carry when I'm on the range, I have to have a tourniquet when I'm on the range. It's just kind of almost a standard operating procedure for us. And you need to think about that as well. If you're carrying a gun, you need to be able to stop blood from leaking out of somebody, either yourself or somebody else, in an emergency. And a gun will cause blood to leak out of people. So, But I keep the front of this thing slick. Because if you have to go prone and you've got something in the way, this is my waist on the far left and the far right, uh, I want to be able to go flat on the deck and not have anything up in the air, you know, pushing me up off the ground because I've got all this stuff uh, full of junk. You never know how long you're going to be there. Uh, so I don't have my pistol magazines around in the front. I don't have anything around in the front. This is clear, slick, and clean for me. There's a another piece on here we didn't talk about, and that is this ring. This ring is connected into your... Uh, cobra buckle on that side. It's got a piece of one wrap here that secures it. Uh, and this is just a, a ring if you are you know, doing vehicle operations and you have to have like a Yates harness and you're going to clip in to a helicopter or a truck or something to keep from falling out. Uh, I wrap mine with five um, uh, 100 mile an hour tape just to reduce the noise signature and, and then just put the one wrap on it and that locks everything in place so it's not moving around on me when I don't want it to be. So that's that piece. 
The belt itself is load rated at 3,000 pounds. That's pretty significant. Obviously, nobody weighs 3,000 pounds, but if you're falling and you know you hit the end of your line, the stress on that line you know, could uh, be a, a lot heavier than what your body is. So that's why they rate those things at such an extreme rating. But this belt is a 3,000 pound rating on it. Now, a couple of other things I talked about is where this sits on your body is important because that over time uh, will become a hindrance to you if you have to wear it a lot in a in a vehicle right so I put this in a certain spot then the next thing I do is I put my magazine pouches where I want them first I just hold them to my body and decide is that where my hand needs to go where I want it to go to retrieve magazines once that's in place I mark it and then I put that on next the other thing that goes on after that is going to be my holster. Now, where this goes on my body, I am very picky about that. I want it to be in the same place every time. This is the inner belt we talked about, right? Now, the inner belt, I've marked it with a Sharpie right in this area here. So when I put this belt, this belt, on my body, right? So assume I've got this wrapped around my waist, as it should be. When I, to put this belt on, right, you, you, you put it on and as soon as it hits the Velcro, it's locked in place. So I want it to go right the first time and I'd have to fool with it because I have to put this thing on quickly sometimes. So what I do is I grab this and you'll notice that this distance here is the same as this distance here. So what I do when I put this belt on is I'll look down at my waist, I'll take this and marry that up to there. And I know now that that is in line exactly where it always is because this is at my center line so this is going to be in the same place it always is and then the rest of the belt just gets pushed into place around the uh, the waistline so that's just a little quick uh, trick I use to make sure that belt lands on me the same every time there's probably better ideas but that's my idea and it works for me this is one of the best belts out there in, my, in our opinion it's thin. I mean, it is super, super thin, right? Not very bulky at all. However, it's really rigid. It's not going anywhere. It holds up to a lot of, you can put a lot of crap on this if you are so inclined. Uh, we're not. We like to keep it slim. Going through doorways and whatnot, you don't want a lot of bulk. And if you want to run, you need to be able to run fast. So, weighing yourself down may not be the best idea. So that's what we went with on this, was something that was really strong, really thin, lightweight, minimalistic, got it done, and what's going to move around on the body. Another belt that's out there is um, one made by a company called Axel Advanced. We tested this belt, and it's it's a good belt. It's just not, doesn't have everything we need. The Axel Advanced, it's called the Eclipse, I believe, um, is, is this belt. You'll notice a lot of similarities, right? It's got the same Tegris type material. The only difference is the Tegris is not encased uh, around the whole belt like this one is. All right, it's, it sticks out at the bottom. And what we found was that you know this this can start to chew into you, um, depending on what you're doing, uh, can chew into you a little bit. One thing I did like about this belt, though, it also obviously it comes with a it's a two belt system, so it's got its own you know inner belt that locks onto the Velcro. There. One thing I did like about this belt is once you get this on, it's got a super long tail, right? And that tail goes inside that, right? So when you're putting this thing on, that snugs up inside there, right? And now you've got the belt firmly locked in place. Kind of a cool idea. Uh, we like it, how that comes together. And once you get that together, it's got a cobra buckle as well in there. But this belt is not load rated. It doesn't have the, um, the load rating that this one does and it's a lot lighter I mean this belt if you take take the belt it like it weighs less than a, an empty one of these oddly you would find uh, but the axle advance is a it's a cool option if you don't need the load rating and you're looking for something minimalistic that's a cool belt as well and I think you can get it in a bunch of different buckle options too but again we like Cobra so we went with Cobra let's see what else we've got here yeah, there's a couple different companies out there that make belts that are uh, in with this Tegger's line. Uh, there's an outfit called GBRS, which is, um, you know, they've 
basically taken this design and instead of cutting circles they cut squares and then they flipped around the uh, this so that it's soft but the part that you wear on your body is um, the hook uh, and then they have a third thing that goes on this if you don't want to wear that so that this doesn't chew you up and it seems like a bunch of extra stuff you know we tried one tried it out didn't like didn't necessarily care for it as much as we like uh, this design um, and this design came out first anyway so it's cool uh, one thing you'll notice I don't have on here I do not have a knife right I mean I've got a knife to utilitarian knife to fix things with but I don't have something like this I don't have something that's designed you know for making holes and stuff and that's what this knife's designed to do um, this knife is made by a scallywag tactical uh, we carry these knives on our on our website for sale but these knives are just made for one thing and that is to stick stuff right that is nothing but a stabbing weapon right there got a nice uh, hole at the top you can grab it pull it out I, the reason I don't have it on here is because I have it on my plate carrier this this knife has got the uh, kydex hole the plastic holster that comes with it and you can use this as your everyday carry uh, it's got the same mono block, uh, not mono block, but it's got the uh, the same clips that we use on our uh, holster for a pistol. I'll show you that. So you can see these are essentially the same. They're made by the same company. They've got the same design. It's got a really aggressive uh, back back piece on the clip to keep it from it locked to your belt, keep from coming off, just like that does so you can see that or not yeah there we go so same company makes these things and we put them on on here and this can go inside the pants whereas in, this goes inside the belt and you know this can be your your um, everyday carry stabbing tool uh, ventilation tool but I carry something like this made by the same made by Scallywag on my plate carrier and I carried on the support side because the handgun, the pistol, if my rifle fails, I go to the pistol, right? If my pistol fails because I'm fighting for my gun, because somebody has jumped on me and they're trying to take it and I need to make space, then that's where this comes into play. This is the backup. But if I have it mounted on the side, if I have it mounted on this side where my pistol is and somebody's fighting for my pistol, this hand's already tied up so I can't get to it. So this thing well, is on my plate carrier on the support side so that I can get to it and make space right the one that I actually carry on my plate carrier I'll show you that well let me point one thing out first looks like this has got a, an edge on it it doesn't have an edge on it right it's got it's got an edge but it's not designed for cutting right that is not going to cut this thing is only designed to take that point and punch holes in things right that's the point of that device the one I carry on my plate carrier is this one you can see there's a significant size difference here there's a couple other differences as well it's got uh, serrations here and the other difference is this thing actually has uh, an edge here that will uh, that will cut and the other difference is this one is made out of aluminum this one is made out of steel and it's d2 steel this is made out of aluminum um, so you know little difference there. All you're doing is punching holes with this. All you, you're punching holes with this, but you can't cut with this as well. And this goes, again, on the plate carrier, and it's designed to be removed and to punch big, giant holes. All right? So that's why you don't see some kind of massive uh, Rambo knife here. So that is the belt. And we wanted just to do a little video for you and show you that and kind of give you our thoughts and why you know, why do we have that there? Why do we have that there? Um, how did we put it together? And why did we choose the things that we, uh, we chose for this belt? So I'll leave it with that and hope you guys have a great day. Get out there, get some training done, um, make good use of the time that you've got, and um, make it a great week.